Manhattan versus Intelligent Design with Michael Shermer and Jonathan Wells. Michael Shermer, author of Why Darwin Matters, The Case Against Intelligent Design, argues that intelligent design theory appeals to human predisposition to look for a creator behind life's complexity. While Jonathan Wells, author of The Politically Incorrect Guide to Darwinism and Intelligent Design, criticizes Darwin's theory of evolution by pointing out examples which demonstrate that the theory is not sound. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me here. Good to be here on the right coast. I'm from Southern California. We're on the left coast over there. Uh, where we, uh, we hang out at Caltech, we are the Skeptic Society. The, the magazine Skeptic is the quarterly publication of the society. We investigate claims of the paranormal, pseudoscience, fringe groups, and cults, and claims of all times, be, uh, all kinds between uh, uh, science and junk science and voodoo science and pathological science and bad science and non-science and plain old nonsense. And unless you've been abducted by aliens and on another planet recently, you've noticed there's a lot of nonsense out there. Some people call us debunkers, but let's face it, there's a lot of bunk. Somebody's got to do it, and that's half of our job, is to uh, explain what's really going on, expose the bunk, like the bunko squad of the police departments. Uh, it's, it's our job to clean up the bad ideas in society, particularly in science. Um, but that's only half the job. The more interesting part of my job, I think, is that not what the particular beliefs are, whether they're true or not, but why people believe them. That is the psychology of beliefs. Uh, whether it's uh, Holocaust deniers, I wrote a whole book about these guys. Uh, do they really believe that the Holocaust didn't happen? Yeah, they really do believe it. They're not just saying it to sell books because they don't really sell books uh, very well on that topic. And uh, they really actually believe that. Uh, of late, probably I've gotten more interviews in the last uh, three weeks than almost anything I've ever done on 9-11 conspiracy theories. These are people who believe that uh, the Bush administration, which they also believe is the most incompetent administration to ever inhabit the White House, is also somehow orchestrated the most incredibly complex, powerful conspiracy of all time uh, in one of the same uh, one of the same person. So I find that uh, very fascinating that somebody can hold in the logic tight compartments of their brain these two com uh, sort of competitive ideas. Um, so we do pick and choose topics that are important uh, to culture. We've never done any. Uh, stories on the Flat Earth Society, for example, because the one and only member who was also the president died a couple years ago. Uh, it's not a big force in, in American cultural life. But on the other hand, t topics like uh, evolution and creation or evolution intelligent design are. So that's what Kay led me to, to write uh, Why Darwin Matters. So I, I will do a little bit of reading and talking from the book uh, in my time here uh, to give you a feel for um, uh, what I think is actually going on here. Um, uh, my doctoral dissertation, uh, David mentioned in the history of science, was actually on uh, evolutionary theory, specifically on Alfred Russell Wallace, who was the co-discoverer of natural selection along with Darwin. Toward the end of his life, uh, Wallace could not for the life of him figure out how natural selection could account for things like the big brain, the size of our brain compared to other primates, for example, or our ability to do mathematics, higher reasoning uh, like mathematics, aesthetic appreciation. Why is it we should appreciate uh, a beautiful sunset or a, a, a musical composition? Uh, wh what, what could account for that in, in natural selection, in, out, out in the Paleolithic environment in which we evolved? He could not figure it out. And so he attributed uh, it to something inherent, inherently directional or teleological, spiritual, something else from the top down. Not this bottom-up, grindingly slow mechanism of natural selection, but something infused into the universe, the cosmos, into us. Uh, he wasn't a, a religious person in any traditional sense, so he didn't believe in a personal God, but he felt that there was design built into the system. And in 1903, he wrote a book uh, called Man's Place in the Universe, in which he basically presented these arguments and showed that uh, we are really still special uh, in the universe. We do have a special place. We are centrally uh, located, at least in a spiritual sense, and we are designed in a very special way. His book was reviewed by none other than Mark Twain, who uh, I think demolished the argument with his clever literary style better than anybody. So this is back in 1903. So I'll read you what is my favorite quote from, from my book, um, from Mark Twain. Man has been here 32,000 years. That it took 100 million years to prepare the world for him is proof that that is what it was done for. I suppose it is. I don't know. If the Eiffel Tower 
We're now representing the world's age. The skin of paint on the pinnacle knob at the summit would represent man's share of that age, and anybody would perceive that that skin was what the tower was built for. <laughs> I reckon they would. I don't know. <laughs> it is next to impossible for us to get out of our sense that we are special. This is just built into the system, and it's hard for any of us, even scientists, even Mr. Natural Selection himself, Wallace, who called himself more Darwinian than Darwin, uh, still could not get, get out of that. Um, so then I continue here um, um, with the question of why do you believe in God? I've been asking people this question most of my adult life, and in 1998, Frank Sullivan and I presented the query in a uh, more formal uh, form, uh, format. Along with the question, why do you think other people believe in God? We gave this in a survey to 10,000 Americans. <clears throat> the number one reason people gave for why they believe in God is the good design, natural beauty, perfection, complexity of the world and the universe. It looks designed, therefore it was designed. Interestingly, when we asked them, why do you think other people believe in God? Uh, that answer dropped down to sixth place in the various answers. The number one answer uh, people gave for why they think other people believe in God is that God is comforting, relieving, consoling, and gives meaning and purpose to life. In other words, I believe in God because of these, these intellectual reasons of it's, it's complex, it's designed, and, they, and they, they wrote these answers in these long essays to us that we then coded, uh, in which they made the design argument. Uh, for, for, for a rational reason for why they believe. And yet, we all recognize in others that people are raised Catholic or Baptist, they're, they grew up in this country or that country, and obviously that has a huge influence on their religiosity. But, um, but my point here is that I think um, what I do is concede the point that it does look designed. So people's intuitions are correct in that sense. It, it, eyes are designed to see. Yes, indeed they are. And the wing is designed to fly. Design before Darwin, the natural inference was a top-down, architectural-like designer. What Darwin gave us then was a theory to show how the design actually can come about through functional adaptations designed, as it were, by natural selection. Um, and part of the problem here, I think, is, uh, is the, the problem uh, Twain pointed out is that it is just natural to see ourselves as center uh, and special, and, and the design argument, the design inference gives us that sense. Um, the problem is, is I think we are designed, as it were, by evolution to find design in nature. We're pattern-seeking animals. Finding patterns in nature may have an evolutionary explanation. There's a survival payoff for finding order instead of chaos in the world and being able to separate threats to fight or flight. Uh, from comforts to embrace or eat or among other things, which enable our ancestors to, to survive and reproduce. We are the descendants of the most successful pattern-seeking members of our species. In other words, we were designed by evolution to perceive design. So I think it is built in to find connections between things and to infer agency in, in other uh, organisms, like organ uh, animals that are predators. We infer, it's correct to infer agency and intention that they are intending to do us harm and just make the assumption whether it's true or not, because false positives won't kill you, but false negatives will. So just assume all agents are intentional and out to get you. So the, the, the inference of design and intention and agency is what I think drives uh, animism, spiritualism, polytheism, and even monotheism. I think it's built into the system. It's part of, our, uh, of, of how we were designed by evolution. 